Hi, it's Red Recapped here. Today I'm going to describe one episode of a movie called, Wild Tales. There are some spoilers ahead. Let's start the movie without further ado. Simon is a disciplined middle-aged man, an engineer who specializes in demolition using dynamite and large construction activities. He is living a regular life with its ups and downs, along with his wife, Victoria, and his only daughter in Buenos Aires, Argentina. Simon has his daughter's birthday party tonight. Once he finishes his job, he receives a call from his wife, asking him to be on time. Simon assures her that he will be there at determined time. On the way back home, he stops his car on a park allowed spot and heads for a bakery store to get the cake for the party. In the meantime, a tow truck can be seen on the same street. When Simon steps out of the store, he is surprised to find his car towed away. He is only left with a flyer which includes the parking address to get his car back. He gets a taxi to the address written on the flyer. As he is about to enter the booth, he notices two dissatisfied, angry men, cursing the corrupt government which is run by insists paying of citizens. He approaches the clerk and tries to reveal that he hasn't done any traffic offenses. But the clerk interrupts him and asks for his car's documents. Simon is also told the towing fee is 490 pesos, equal to $50 at the time. But Simon is adamant in explaining that the space he parked wasn't marked as a tow-away zone, which is yellow on the sidewalk. The clerk shows no interest in the topic and tells him if he wants to take his car, he must pay the towing bills. He also adds that he can make an official complaint to the Department of Transportation to get his rights only after paying here. Simon is highly adamant that he take his car without paying any penny, plus he requests that is being given the taxi fee he paid for, as well as an apology from an official for the time he wasted. But the latter sneers at him, which angers Simon. Just then Simon is targeted by objections from people in line, and is told to not take their time as everyone has his own problems. Simon is finally forced to pay the price. But before leaving, he angrily considers the man as a criminal who works as a slave to a corrupt and unjust system, while the latter simply ignores him. On the way to reach his daughter's birthday, he gets stuck in bumper-to-bumper -bumper traffic because of rush hours. When he gets home, he has almost missed the event. He lets down his family among relatives and friends, left them with a tiny cake and embarrassed them. When all the guests leave, a quarrel ensues between the couple. Victoria believes he could have simply gotten a taxi to her daughter's birthday. She also tells him that everything is his priority other than his family. Being tired of his actions, Victoria subtly threatens to divorce him. Simon is left dumbfounded, believing what he did was right. The following day, Simon heads to the Department of Transportation to get his right. While standing in line, he's told by a man who has had the same problem many times. But the man offers Simon to pay the money only to comfort himself, or else he will finally get a stroke in the comes and goes. He is also given a lecture to make his own family enjoyment the top priority in his life. When it is Simon's turn, he approaches the man in charge and tells him that they must send an officer to the traffic offense site to prove his words. But the man just ignores him and simply tells him if someone got the ticket, he must pay the fine or else it will double as time passes by. When Simon subtly calls him a crook. The latter right away calls security. In a fit of rage, Simon grabs a fire extinguisher, and starts smashing the window until he is arrested by the guards. In the following scene, Simon can be seen released from custody, bailed out by his colleague and best friend. The newspapers has covered his violence. The news are labeled by the company's name, which could cause the company a huge loss. On the other hand, the municipality is their top client which Simon directly has gotten into trouble with. So the decisions has been made to fire Simon, which left him baffled and in shock. Right at the same time, his marriage starts to collapse as his wife files for divorce. They have a meeting in the presence of their lawyers. Victoria's lawyer mentions that as Simon is now unemployment, he cannot afford family expenses, such as alimony, child school, insurance and overhead costs. Hearing this, Simon assures them, as he has been annually paying his wife expenses during their martial life, he will meet the needs of his only daughter as well. But the lawyer is seeking a divorce and sole custody of her daughter for her client as she has a job and is able to afford expenses. Trying to be calm, Simon explains that he has been jobless for a few days now. And it's unfair to not allow to live with his daughter, especially when he has already paid expenses for the next year in advance. But when her lawyer mentions his anger in treating Victoria. Seeing this, the lawyer tells him that his aggression is quite clear, in the newspaper, on TV and even here in the presence of a judge. When Simon tells his wife are you going to take my daughter away from me, you get crazy. Victoria talks passively, which gives her lawyer the chance to finish the conversation. Simon ends up forcing to give up his daughter. Heartbroken and furious, Simon applies for many jobs, but to no avail, despite the great resume he has. Apparently because of his violent background, while in fact, it's the power structure that has eliminated him from the system. 
When he returns from one of such companies, he finds his car wrongfully towed away yet again. The next scene shows us how his hands get used to obeying, but not his mind. This time he has no request to take his right. After retrieving his car, Simon puts a huge amount of explosive in the car trunk. The next morning, he parks his car in a tow zone and walks to a nearby cafe, waiting for his little tow truck driver friend to arrive. While enjoying his delicious breakfast, he soon notices the tow truck through the window, which quickly tows his car away. On the other hand, Simon calmly asks for a check. Back to the tow parking, a woman can be seen paying bills, while she is told she is allowed to sue, only after paying the bills here. She angrily says, you're a corrupt fascist regime. Just then, a huge explosion occurs, freaking them out. Simon detonates the explosives, destroying his car as well as the towing office, with no casualties. In no time, the incident goes on the newspaper's front pages. Some consider it a terrorist action, some call it an incident. But it's proved that it was deliberate as Simon had calculated the amount of explosion carefully. That's why there were no casualties in the case. On the other hand, Simon is imprisoned and becomes a local hero. He earns a nickname, Bombita which means little bomb. He gets millions of hashtags on social media for his release. In the final scene, Simon's wife and daughter visit him in jail where he is so popular among inmates. Victoria and his beloved daughter present Simon with a cake in the shape of a tow truck for his birthday, and he finally smiles after months. That's all from the video. Thanks for your time.